Good evening, <clears throat> brothers and sisters. Is well with us. It's another night, Friday night, the third year of January 2021. This is Pastor to be sharing with the Deliverance Hour. I welcome you. I hope that you have a good time with the Lord. And with me, of course. Hallelujah. Father, let the <clears throat> Words I come out of my mouth, let them be directly from you. This evening I ask, I ask that you bless your children with your word, with your power, with your spirit, in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, like I said, you're welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about the zeal of the Lord tonight. The zeal of our Father and our God. By His grace, you and I are even able to be here tonight. The Bible says it's the grace of the Lord. It's His mercy. Because of the mercy and the grace of God, that we are not consumed. Thank God for that. It is by his mercy, it is by his grace that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. So if you are here today, <laughs> it's by his grace. By his grace, not mine. But by the grace of the Lord that you are not consumed. Because of him. Because of him. And I, it's because of him that we can make head of any situation. Glory be to God. May God help you. He helped me too. May we not miss our way. May we not be lost. The things of time in the mighty name. The power of the Holy Spirit may speak to you and I in the mighty name of Jesus. Like I said, we want to talk about the zeal of the Lord. Discuss and pray some prayers about the zeal of the Lord. <clears throat> Many a time you hear your pastor say, The zeal of the Lord will perfect it. <laughs> Hallelujah. The zeal of the Lord will do it. And you're probably thinking, hmm, does God have a zeal? Zeal is usually used for men. When you're talking about zeal, you're talking about men. You're not talking about a, about, about a sovereign being. You're talking about men. So you think in your heart, What's this guy talking about? How can God's zeal perfect something? Hallelujah. There is the zeal of the Lord. There is the zeal of the Lord. You know, usually it's good to, um, usually it's very good for you to, you know, like sort of try to define what zeal is. Can define what zeal is, then we can probably have a greater understanding of what the zeal of God is. You know, I want to think and say, hey, in your mind, you're thinking, what is the zeal of the Lord? What is the zeal of the Lord? What is the zeal of my maker? When they say there's something called the zeal, what are they talking? That's what we want to talk about tonight. May God give you and I more understanding in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I think I just want us to start with a with a song. Let's start with a song and that will help us a little bit. <clears throat> One of my favorite songs is in the Bible. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord 
forever I will see of the mercies of the Lord. I will see of the mercies of the Lord. Forever I will see of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness. Through generations I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. Our God is merciful. He is able. <clears throat> and it's inside his mercy and this is ability that you will find what you call the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah 9 7. <clears throat> there, was, there was a prophecy that was coming concerning uh, Jesus the Redeemer. And after that prophetic word had come, I begin of Isaiah, I think six, Isaiah one to six. The seventh verse says, "The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this." Wonderful Counselor, mighty Man of Peace, the King of Kings is going to come. It was being prophesied through Isaiah, and then he said in Isaiah seven, "The zeal of the Lord." will perform this. What is the meaning of zeal? What is really the meaning of zeal? Zeal is like an eagerness, an eagerness, an interest in the pursuit of something, you know? It can be an enormous energetic power, a drive of energy, a major potential difference that drives, you know, Something that drives you. And it's usually used when you're describing a human being, you know, who's trying to achieve something. So there's something that drives you. Maybe somebody wants to be a medical doctor. And what is driving them is that they've seen many people dying and they think they want to contribute to helping people to be well. Same thing with nurses. You see a young child whose zeal is to become an engineer. And you see them even when they are small, <clears throat> playing with erector sets. Uh, I don't know what those other things they use. You know, making models, making drawings. And child is only two or three years old. He already has a zeal. He already has a drive. Something that makes him say he wants to do something. He wants to achieve. So usually for there to be a zeal, there is an objective. We judge a man's zeal when the purpose has been long in the man's heart. You know, and he has followed through it for a long period. You see a pastor who's been there for 30, 40 years, preaching the word of God, great men of God in the past, Billy Graham, 50, 60 years, Kenneth Hagen, 60 years preaching. And he still remembers every little bit. If you watch his old, uh, he's going to be with the Lord now, the original <clears throat> Kenneth Hagen. <laughs> you know, but when you see, he has incredible memory of everything that happened 50, 60 years ago. When he's talking in his in his uh, in his ministrations, <clears throat> why does he remember those things so easily? Because there was a zeal, there was something that was driving him. Africans, Doctor Oyedepo, when he's talking about the way his ministry started, you see zeal because he remembers every little thing that happened. He remembers every little thing. The great E.A. Adeboye. He remembers everything when the Lord asked him to go into a bush area when he sold his car to feed some people. He remembers every little detail. 
Why do this kind of great ministers of God remember such things? <clears throat> because right from the beginning, they had a zeal, they had a drive that was taking them somewhere. They had a vision, and that vision was driving them. Colossians 3, 23. It says, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. So, zeal is something you do heartily to the Lord. And I have friends, when we want to do a crusades and revivals. You always want to put my big picture there. Great prophet is coming. And I, uh, those who know me will know that since I started ministry, I've never, and I always like to say it with pride. My pride is not because I'm a proud person. No, my pride is that my zeal is not from me. It's got nothing to do with me. That I am serving God is not from me. Is, is because it's Jesus. It's about Jesus. It is about Jesus. So I don't see any reason why I am of any consequence in it. I am just a tool being used and hoping to be to keep on being used. You know? Because many of us we somehow become very, very big after a while. Talking about the zeal of God. When you become a minister of God and they invite you to one or two places to come and preach, people get to know who you are. Then you have people inviting you to come and speak and use the word of God to, to preach. People miss it. Or when they have a few thousand people coming in on Saturdays and Sundays to hear the word that God has given them preach, not their word, but God's word. They miss it. They begin to think it's about them. They begin to think, oh, I'm a great man. I'm a great minister. If you don't invite me and give me a lot of money, I won't come to your church. If you don't prepare a very, very big uh, hotel room for me, you will not see me in your church. Make sure that there's a $25,000 waiting in an envelope or in a check before I can preach in your church. People have got to that level. So, like I'm saying today, is when it's the zeal of the Lord, it is what drives you. What is zeal is what drives you. It sends you beyond your normal person. It sends you beyond your normal person. And for that reason, you start to ask yourself, it's not about me. You tell yourself, this is not about me. It's not about me at all. It's about Jehovah. It's not about me. It's about Jehovah. It is not about you. So, brethren, we're talking, discussing the zeal of God. When I first spoke about the zeal of men, the zeal of men <clears throat> and eagerness that they have. Now, the Passover of the Jews was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and the money changers doing business. <laughs> Glory be to God. Oh my God. He just went, and when he went there, he found men doing these things. I think, uh, where is this now? John 2. John 2. So, John 2, verse 13 is where I was reading just now. Bible says he went during the Passover, went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen. They were selling, they were doing business. They were doing what? They were doing business. And Jesus went there 
during the Passover, <clears throat> supposed to be a very holy time, remembering the Passover, and he found them doing business. Glory be to God. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold those, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that which was written in Isaiah 9-7. The zeal for your house is eating me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Can you imagine so-called men of letter? And someone is saying, Destroy this temple, and in three days it will be raised up. It will be raised up. Destroy the temple in three days. It will be raised up. That is what he's telling them they should remember. And they're looking at this fellow like, does this one know what he's saying at all? Does he know what he's saying at all? He's telling them, go. And they said, well, what is the sign? How will we know that this is you talking? That is not some... Uh, some fake prophet talking or something. He says, raise, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. That's verse 21. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. <clears throat> like I said, human zeal is a very powerful energy. But just think about when the situation mentions the zeal of the Lord. The zeal of the omnipresent, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing being. We know our river as our maker and our creator. When the Bible is talking about it, it's a completely different thing. Why? Because now it's talking about the desire of our maker <clears throat> to have to, an objective. That our maker has an objective. He has something that is driving him. The great English preacher, Charles Spurgeon, said, <clears throat> I'm going to quote him here. He says, beyond all controversy, this is a most remarkable text that we just read. Zeal is an attribute which is attributable only to man. So you don't have to speak of the zeal of the Lord of hosts. So you have, might be thinking, I'm paraphrasing him now, you might be thinking that it might be a misplaced word to say something, God's zeal, the divine arm, that's the Omisai God, the fervency of the infinite. Is it possible for somebody who's infinite in power, in mercy, in presence, to have a zeal, to have a fervency, to have an eagerness, to have something driving him? Of course. The zeal of the Lord of hosts. What was his zeal? <clears throat> he had a zeal to make creatures that could communicate with him, that could fellowship with him, that he could pour out his own spirit his own energy, his own love into. I'm no longer talking, I'm not no longer perfect, uh, Charles Podium, by the way. That is our goal. He had his zeal. He wanted to have his own creatures that would, you know, that would love him, that would communicate with him, that would fellowship with him. And so he created us. And to create us, he first created somewhere where he felt would be comfortable. So he decided to create the earth, created the universe, made orbs, giant orbs. Some are so much bigger than the earth that 
they had to be swallowed up in their hole. If they had ever went near them. But in the same way, he created a way where they are all spaced apart. He made the universe. It was no small work for him. It was not. He made the stars. Made all kinds of of creations. He made angels, creatures that could only watch him, but they delighted in him. And then he made created elders, people who are worshiping 24-7. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. A host of angels. He, six days we are told that he made the earth and then he rested from all his work. Indeed, what is there in the mere creative act to awaken this kind of attributes I'm talking about? What is it? What it is? Was it just a mere, let me just use my power? Brethren, there is such boundless power in our God that all that he has created also is so infinite, he's so powerful, he's so mighty that the earth is like a drop, a very small thing. Yet in all those things, brethren, he still has time for tiny little orbs tiny little atoms like you and I that he wants to fellowship with the smallest of his creation. Imagine somebody who could create Jupiter and those kind of planets and on the smaller planet like Earth, he wants to create, he wants to have fellowship with even the smallest air on your head. It takes something to have that feeling. It's called the zeal of the Lord. It is the potential difference. It is, another word for it is the love. The love that he has. His love was so much, so boundless, so bountiful, that he decided he wants to create even the smallest being and have fellowship with him. Have you ever thought, think about this, even one church service, maybe there are 200, 300 people there, or maybe you have a large, uh, you have a large uh, assembly of 10,000 people, or perhaps these days with media, you are online, and there are two million people watching you as they go. Each one of them is praying. When the preacher says, let's all pray to the Lord. You see two million people around the world, maybe even 10 million. And they all bow down and they'll pray. Do you know this God <clears throat> is ready, able, willing, has the power, has the capacity to be able to listen to each prayer some of you will pray 10 prayers at once. He's able to listen to each prayer, each language, each behavior, each cry, each tear, and decide inside of him, in his providence, that he's going to hear each one. When you are all crying, when I am crying, mercy, 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 Lord, he's thinking in his heart. Of course I will have mercy. Mercy is why I created you in the first place. Love is why I love you in spite of your behaviors. Which one of us, <clears throat> 7 billion on the face of this earth, does not sin? I don't know. There will be very few people on the face of the earth that do not sin. I think it's possible. I think the only perfect creature was Jesus. So there's seven, eight billion of us on the earth, maybe seven and a half billion. 
and we all cry out. Let's imagine we all even all cry out at the same time. And say, Father, I have sinned, forgive me. He's got the capacity, wherewithal, the love of energy in him to accommodate every single one of us. Is there, is there a human being that does not have a need every day? They have a need to breathe. They have a need to drink water. They have a need to eat. Procreation. Just having fun going to the beach, watching the TV, driving a car. We all have needs. He's got the capacity to give you and I everything. He's got the skills. He's got the masterpiece. He's got the power to be able to absorb every need, absorb and forgive every sin. He says, I don't even want to remember them anymore. Whoa, I'm forgiving you. Even when you do the worst things we're not supposed to do against you, he's able to forgive and forget. Why? <clears throat> because of the zeal that got him to start it off in the first place. The power, the driving force, what was it? It's love. The zeal of the Lord will perfect it when you hear that. There's an energy that pushes the Lord. It is the zeal that made him to release the Israelites after 430 years. It was his zeal that perfected opening the Red Sea. It was his zeal that gave them manna. Look at all the miracles in the Bible. Starting from the beginning of time, 6,000 years ago, when the Bible was first written. Look at the zeal in all that 6,000 years. He's able to save able to heal, able to make provision for us, able to forgive us. His zeal, his power, his desire was so much that he was able to let go of his son. Oh God. He was able to let go of his son. Somebody you are in communion with, wake up in the morning, hey dad, Hi, Jesus. How are you? We're good. And then he says, you know what, son? Because of the zeal that we have, and we created these creatures, and they are messing up so much from the time of Adam till this moment, I'm going to have to separate from you for a while. I want you to go down there. And then that zeal, remember that Jesus was one with the Father. That zeal made God the Son to separate himself from God the Father. The zeal took him and turned him into his own creation. In the womb of an, his creation, God went in the womb of his own creation, reformed, and then grew up, eating and drinking, his cells multiplying in a body, in, in a son that he created, just because he knew there was a need to come and die for you and I, to save our souls, to save us from the stupid things we do every day, from sins, unforgiveness, from lies, from backbiting, from the witchcraft we do every day. He knew there would be a time. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ had died for. The zeal of the Lord made it possible that his son would come here. <clears throat> I was, when I look at the word of God, I don't know about you, the part that strikes me the most is where Jesus was about to be crucified and he went to the garden of Gethsemane. And he says, if it will your will, Lord. He says, can you take this away? Can you take the weight of what I'm about to bear? The sins of the world. Can you take it away from me? Jesus got to a place where the flesh 
was trying to react, was trying to revolt. Flesh was saying, I can't take this amount of pain I'm about to go through. <clears throat> Let me say it again. Flesh said, I cannot take this pain I am about to go through. The Spirit of the Lord said, I can. The flesh was, no, you can't go through this, Jesus. If it be thy will, can you let this pass? And then he was strengthened and he came to himself. He took over his, his flesh. All that, brethren, is what we call the zeal of the Lord. The potential difference that was driving the Lord. Another thing that strikes me is that he now went he now went for three days. The Lord Jesus died. His father turned away from him completely. Turned away from him completely. He was on the cross carrying all the sins. His father removed his eye. Let him go and die. Because of the zeal he had for you and I. The zeal that made him create heaven and earth. The zeal that made him form human beings. The zeal that said, I will fellowship with my creation. The zeal that said, they have messed up, I'm going to send my son to the earth. The zeal that made him turn his face away from his son. For the son to be able to carry out the plan that they had had. And they will save you and I. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us. The Bible says, Ezekiel took it away, nailing it to the cross. The zeal that allowed Jesus to go down below earth to make an open show of all principalities and powers. That is what you call the zeal of the Lord. No other being can carry out that zeal. It's not possible. The zeal of the wisdom that made him to do that is incredible, brethren. He insisted that he would do it because of you and I. The zeal of the Lord. When I see, brethren, Human beings say, there is no God. I'm thinking in my mind. Will his zeal absolve this person to? And the answer is yes. When you see human beings bury other human beings alive, see human beings shoot people and kill them, send weapons of mass destruction that kills 100,000 people at a go, and this God is somewhere. He's watching it all happen. He has a zeal that overtakes all that. That is the zeal of the Lord, brethren. That is what you call the zeal of the Lord. That is the zeal of the Lord. It's incredible. Incredible. Credible. I'm thinking the zeal of the Lord was part of the plan of glorifying Christ. Glorifying Christ. If you look at somewhere in, um, let me try to remember, I think it's Philippians 2. Yes, Philippians 2. Let me read it to you. Let's look for it and read it real quick. Christ had such humility. He had such humility, brethren. And let me look at this a minute. If there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, 
fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. This, if you look inside what I'm reading, we are talking about the things that God does that he wants us to emulate. Verse 4 of Philippians 2. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That is the zeal of God. Not caring about his own comforts, but thinking of you and I and saying, this ones that want to destroy themselves, I'm going to save them. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> Everything we've read from Philippians 2, 1 to 4. God is saying in 5, I want you to have this kind of mind that I just read. Because it was also in Christ Jesus, your senior brother, the firstborn. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. This was God the Father. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about the hand. I'm just going to show you two different <laughs> situations. One is God the Father, one is God the Son. Of course, there's God the Holy Spirit. But Jesus was in the form of God the Son. But he thought it's not a robbery when he was told. That he had to leave being God the Son. What did he do? Philippians 2 7. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and therefore was made in the likeness of men. You know, I spoke earlier how he went into a woman and became a child in a woman for nine months. Spirit of the Lord stayed in the woman for nine months. To become a child, to be, go and serve, service. Some of us are so big now. We are pastors. We are bishops. I saw one fellow the other day. The first time I preached in his church, I remember laying hands on him, and the spirit of God hit him, and he fell flat on his head. And he was touched heavily by the spirit of God. But now he's a big pastor. He heads one or two parishes. He could barely greet me. And I was thinking, no, that's not the way of the Lord. Look at the way of the Lord. Let me read to you again. Verse 7 of Philippians 2. Or made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man. Now, he's now a man. Look at the zeal of the Lord. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Think about it. <clears throat> you are a general in the army, or you are the field marshal. You are the most senior general in the army, in your country. And then somebody suddenly said, that you are going to go and become, uh, what are you going to go and become? Somebody suddenly says, they're going to make you to go and become, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? You're going, to, you're going to go and become the smallest person. They're going to say, no, that's not going to happen. They're going to say, no, that's not going to happen. Glory be to God. They're going to say, no, that's not going to happen. No, this is not going to happen. What are you saying? No, I cannot become the small person you want me to be. That's what you will say. He made himself of no likeness. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. He made himself of no likeness. That's what the Lord did made himself of no likeness. 
That's what he did, brethren. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. He made himself of no likeness. I want to thank God. God is mighty. He's, he's so wonderful. He's so excellent. He made himself of no likeness. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory be to God. Let us continue. So, like I was saying, he decided, brethren, that he was going to make that difference. How did he decide he was going to make that difference? How did he decide he was going to make that difference? Let's go back to the word of God that we're reading just now. Philippians 2. Let's go to Philippians 2, verse 9. Again. Philippians 2, verse 9. Philippians 2, verse 9. If you're there, very good. Let me go back to it. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Like I said, you see, I paused for a while there. He made himself obedient unto death. Christ is already above death. But he made himself obedient unto death. Why? Because he had to take the sins of the world. Even the death of the cross. Bible says, even the death that the one that was of the cross, the one that was where the one that was of the cross, he had to take on even the death that was of the cross. That is how difficult it was for Christ, but he had to take it. He had to take it. If he didn't do it, you and I would not be where we are today. The zeal of the Lord was such that he had to do what. He had to do it. He had no option but to do it. He had no option but to do it. His zeal said he had no option. But to do what? But to do it. And look at verse 9, I will say. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. At the beginning, I was trying to tell you that the zeal was such that he would glorify Christ. That was part of his plan. <clears throat> In the middle of all this that I want to do, I will empower my son. He will be obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
will see him for three days. He'll come back. And because he will be obedient, I will now give him a name above every name. Verse 10 of Philippians 2. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. Such that he walked around to glorify the Son. From being a baby in a manger, a youth that became obedient to his parents, became a full grown man, and then became a servant unto men. But from now, wow. When you say Jesus, something has to happen. <laughs> That's the sacrifice that we call the zeal of the Lord. The sacrifice that came as a baby and ended up on the cross of Calvary. Bleeding, suffering, dying, being spat on, being called all kinds of names. God the Father was passionate for this time. That's his zeal. That is his zeal. That is his zeal. God the Father was so passionate. That was his zeal. His zeal was so powerful that there had to be I mean, something had to happen. Something had to happen, brethren. His zeal was so high that something had to happen. Something had to happen. And what had to happen, like I told you, he had made sure that his son had to die for you and I. He just made sure that his son had to die for you and I. That still goes on into so many things. So many things. That was what set Jesus Christ up and he went and sat down next to his father. Established him forever. Became an advocate for you and I until such a time when he will become a judge. Zeal. His zeal will do what? His zeal will perform it. Setting him up there. That's what the zeal did. One thing about the zeal of God you also have to understand before we pray now is that the covenant of grace he has on us will always be fulfilled. So when there's grace, that grace will always be there for you and I. That grace is already finished. While we were yet sinners, he had died. He'll always be there. The Lord came when the church could not save itself. The church could not secure the zeal. The zeal of the church was not enough. God had to come as a human being. Had to come as a human being. <clears throat> These days, the church is being defeated in different ways. It's just battles, brethren, not the war. The battles that we're going through as a church is not the war. You see a major battle in America right now, church. Brethren are using the church to fulfill divisive tendencies. Things that you cannot see in the Bible. They call themselves all kinds of names. Christians, evangelicals, so this and so and that. It's just the battle that the enemy has with the church. You have to be able to understand it. That the zeal of God is being challenged by the enemy. You use those who call themselves children of God, Christians, 
evangelicals. He will use them, for the truth will prevail. The truth will prevail. I promise you, children don't want to hear about Jesus anymore. They want to hear about rap artists. The rap artists, they bend what should be the gospel. They'll bend into their own deal to make money for themselves. A godless generation. But they're still God. The zeal. Don't weep. Don't we lose a few battles. Don't. Truth. God is truth. Nothing can change the truth. Jesus is the truth. Nothing can change the truth. They can call it all kinds of names. They can sway the word of God. They can sway the church different ways. Those are just battles. The war itself has already been won on the cross. Three days after. Why? Because of the zeal of the Lord. May the Lord give you understanding, my brethren. In Jesus' name. We'll go more into the zeal. Maybe even tomorrow or some other day. Let us say some prayers right now. Oh Lord, let your zeal enter into every child of God to perfect their redemption and yield them for your work. Go ahead and pray. Oh Lord, let your zeal enter into every child of God to perfect their redemption and yield them for your work. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Let your zeal enter into every child of God to perfect their redemption and yield them for your work. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The next prayer point. Oh Lord, let your zeal consume the earth and all its inhabitants so they may find your mercy and be called unto you. Why don't you go ahead and pray that prayer? Lord, let your zeal consume the earth and all its inhabitants so that they may find your mercy and be called unto you. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal consume, let it consume all the earth's inhabitants, every single one, that it may find your mercy and be called unto you. Oh, you cannot be called unto the Lord unless he has mercy on you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh God, drop your zeal upon us and make us zealous even we redeemed by blood, by your Holy Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Lord, let you drop your zeal upon us. Make us zealous, so that if so that we too redeemed by blood, by your Holy Spirit. Make us zealous. Ask the Lord to make you zealous. Redeemed by blood, by the Holy Spirit. Make me zealous, O Lord. Make me redeemed by blood, by the Holy Spirit. Make me zealous, O Lord. Go ahead and pray. Make me zealous, O Lord. Make me zealous, O Lord. Make me zealous, O Lord. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, make me zealous. Make me zealous, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Make me zealous, redeemed by your blood, by the Holy Spirit. Make me zealous, O Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Father, next prayer point. Father, let your zeal perfect your assignment for me on this earth and enable me to finish it before it is time to go or time for you to come. It's long, it's long winded, isn't it? Let your zeal perfect your assignment for me on this earth before it's time for me to go, Lord. Go ahead and pray. Let your zeal perfect your assignment and enable me to finish it, O oh Lord, before it's time to be called by you in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal perfect your assignment for me. On the face of this earth, not all of us are pastors. Everybody has a different assignment. But let the zeal of God perfect whatever it is. Take care of other people. Go ahead and ask the Lord to perfect it now with the zeal. Let your zeal perfect your assignment for me on this earth. Enable me to finish it, Lord, before it's time to go or time for you to come. In Jesus' name. 
we pray. Amen. <clears throat> the next prayer point. Lord, let your zeal destroy all the works of darkness, holding back the preaching of the gospel of this earth. Let your zeal destroy all the works of darkness, holding back the preaching of the gospel. Right from the hearts of men, let whatever is dark in their hearts, let it be removed. Those areas in the world where they say that Christ will not be heard, let your zeal overcome them, O oh Lord. Let your zeal overcome them, pray, brethren. Let your zeal overcome them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your zeal overcome them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your zeal overcome them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to pray. Lord, let your zeal overturn every wickedness that has targeted me and made my life a challenge in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray right now. Lord, let your zeal overturn every wickedness that has targeted me and made my life a challenge in the name of Jesus. All kinds of wickedness. It might be sickness in your body. It might be poverty. It might be not moving forward. It might be a bad marriage. Whatever it is. Every let it overturn every wickedness that has targeted me, made my life a challenge in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your zeal overturn every wickedness that has targeted me and made my life a challenge in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal overturn every wickedness, oh Lord, that has targeted me and made my life a challenge in Jesus' name. We are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. I want you to ask the zeal of the Lord of hosts to open new doors of opportunities. That's the final prayer point. Lord, let your zeal, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, open new opportunities to me tonight. Pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your zeal, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, open new opportunities to me from tonight in the name of Jesus, opportunities for preaching, opportunities for knowing others. Let your zeal open those opportunities to me tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal, Lord, let you open new divine opportunities to me tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal open new doors to me, O oh Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal open new doors to me, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal open new doors to me tonight, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal open new doors to me, Lord. Doors of ministry, doors of finance, doors of favor, in the name of Jesus. Let your zeal open it to me, Lord. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Where you are, I want you to clap for Jesus right now. Just clap for the King of Kings. Clap for him mightily. Thank him for all he has done tonight. Thank him for the wonderful things he's done. Thank him for the deliverance he has given you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank him. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. We bless your name, O oh Lord. You are mightier than the mightiest. We exalt your name, Lord. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Hallelujah to your name. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Let the people say, Amen. I wish you a wonderful Sunday, wherever you are on the face of this earth. Serve your God, relax, be peaceful, let his zeal work for you. Shalom from Pastor Tumishi and the Believers Evangelical Fellowship in Pinkasta. God bless you. Have a great night. Hallelujah.